So uh, this is a video that I'm putting together. Um, I make uh, blanks for the Chopstick Master uh, tool from Bridge City, and uh, um, I got asked to do a large order of chopstick blanks. And you may have seen the uh, other tool that is a, a wooden body uh, chopstick making kit, and it is from Japan Tools that they sell. Um, the customer had requested that. Uh, I do this order form and uh, they needed the blanks by the 30th and they are on their way um, but I went on ahead and I cut the blanks and I just am kind of going over it um, in case anybody is interested in kind of what you have to do to cut uh, square dowels you know for this type of purpose and uh, and also if anybody's watching and uh, has these tools or if there's a manufacturer of these uh, um, these sticks and they could use square dowels let me know you cheating so uh cheating. this hound dog right here this is duke come on and uh i went to the wood shop there to buy some wood i used to work over here uh this is woody's wood shop out in wilmington north carolina and uh we had to lock him up because he uh was not letting me buy wood but uh yeah he was uh kind of having a great wood, time there. so uh in order to start this process the first thing i did is i cleaned out these boards uh, after I got a good finish on both sides of the boards, I went on ahead and I used the track saw. It's kind of not running in this, but you know, I'm kind of demonstrating how, how, how we would do that. We just edge join them with the track saw, real simple. Gets it square enough. Uh, I, I went and pulled out the joiner for smaller pieces, which aren't pictured there. Um, uh, so what you can see there is just kind of the beginning setup of the power feeder. You can notice here that uh, I have set this up for zero clearance or at least trying to I'm, I'm increasing the height of the table saw right now the blade in it so it'll cut through and uh, that gets me my zero clearance in that last step I did uh, set the fence to eight, an eight millimeter cut because the customer is requesting an eight millimeter rip on this so the first thing we do is we rip them um, wide and then we take them and run them back through and rip them again. So I'm about to make a whole lot of sawdust. And uh, as you guys can see, I've uh, laid some uh, plastic down just to keep sawdust from getting in a lot of places that I don't want it to get. We would do this outside, but we got this tropical storm rolling up through here today. So um, this uh, facilitates the need for uh, what you're doing plastic. here is uh, I've got my power feeder here and I've had to set it on slow speed and uh, this gear that you see right here this smaller gear was actually on top um, and I could switch them around and change the speed but doing it this way will make it run twice as fast and uh, had to use <coughs> excuse me the slower feed because <coughs> the stock would not run through on the faster feed but now that we have the smaller stock that you see right here we're going to run it through at a so on a second note on this power feeder i got a uh, fantastic deal um i think it was machinery max was like the online auction that i got this power feeder from and uh i actually only paid about 50 dollars for this feeder and uh when i got it like the rollers that were on it were like completely worn out but uh i guess i contacted western roller and uh they had rollers for it for 20 bucks so um for both of them so if anybody uh ever needs some rollers uh check out west uh, uh uh what is the name of them uh, western roller and i think they're out in oregon and they got a website you can call them up they're fantastic Master feed rate is a success so check it out so i probably should have got this on camera but i had some pieces that were a little bit thinner than this and uh specification for this uh these blanks is an eight by eight and uh I'm, I'm only stopping to talk about this because uh you see all these pieces that are here and i probably have about 30 or 40 of them that i've kind of cut all together and uh every single one of these pieces uh so my saw is set to eight millimeters on the rip and the, i know that the first one's good because of how it goes but usually there's a waste piece that is thinner that looks like that and you can you can kind of see by eye 
And what is damn amazing about this is every single one of these off cut pieces are exactly eight millimeters, which is astounding. Like that'll never happen again Thank ever. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, is it uh, to go over? If anybody has ever used a uh, zero clearance uh, insert on their saw, it's a really good idea. But uh, the thing of it is, is with this, uh, this setup, I didn't have one for this saw because I just haven't bought one and haven't made one. But if you ever want a really quick way to do it, you don't have to, to go out and run and do the insert. You, you can do what I've done here and take a board and put it on top. And what I've done is I've just clamped it here and then clamped it here. And uh, it's got zero clearance on the uh, defense there. It's not something you always want to do, but with this chopstick making operation, it kind of helps to do it this way. So with what I've done here is uh, I've just taken my meter stick and uh, made sure that the, the width is... Uh, we were going between 238 and 239. The, the blank specification called for 240, but uh, I was just making sure that I got this right uh, when setting up my miter saw at my miter saw station. Folks, this is a really convoluted setup to set them up a miter saw. And you notice my blade here without a guard on it, which is not the safest practice, but I can promise you folks that everything is going to be okay. You just when you have a situation like this, you just got to watch yourself when you're you're doing it. Uh, okay, well, there we what go. What we're doing is we are making a box um, to put these in, which I don't have to think about making the box, but basically the way that I'm going to do this is going, you know, double ply, taking that and sticking that right down in there. What that'll do is give the box a little bit more uh, integrity to hold up to the... Uh, the beat and it's going to take well it's in shipping which it shouldn't be serious but it will uh it'll need a little more i would use plywood for this but i didn't want to buy a sheet so uh, we're doing cardboard because it's a little bit so in cheap. case anybody is wondering how i you know mass produce my chopstick blanks once i get them uh to, to like cross cut i'll get it to this point right here and i'll just use this guy right here and making sure to get them all the way against that stop um and then that's how I, I cut them the length. I would go ahead and do it, but I've got a one-handed saw and I need to uh, hold it. You know, when I say one-handed, there are saws that have both directions that you can operate with one hand and this one does not so, have that. It, like if you look at my blanks, and these are all of them that I just cut with the saw, like when you're looking at them, there's no, you know, major tear out or anything on the ends. Uh, I try to make sure they're all square. There's like a little bit of flaying that like you can see on that piece right there that's like that. There should be no more than that and kind of having that block back there behind the pieces kind of stops a lot of tear out on the on blue it on the back end of the saw so uh i don't know if anybody knows anything about cherry but uh this is a good example of a stick that uh has mineral streaks in the cherry this is like characteristic for uh for cherry see how it runs that shriek all the way in there usually it doesn't pose a problem uh with anything that you're doing um but this is, this is like normal, so if you see any of this, it is not what we would consider defective. We would go ahead and sit it on. Now, there is cherry that, you know, um, like if you look at this cherry, you don't see a whole lot. And I think that right there is one of them that you could see. Cherry is also known for having cat's paws, and this stuff really isn't that bad. I mean, there's been a little bit of stuff in it, but not much. Making some progress. Took me an hour so far to cut all these, the length that you see here. Okay, so it has literally taken me an hour to cut each bundle of these. Uh, I think there's about, oh gosh, there's probably about 700 to 750 sticks per layer that's in here. Um, so yeah, I got a little bit more cutting to do. I was a little worried it's not going to fit in the box, but I think it's all going to go in. Okay, so at this point, I'm, I'm about done cutting these blanks, but uh, as you can see here, I've got this guy right here, and this guy that's in this kit is probably not going to work. Now, if you look at all the other sticks that are in there, they're all going to work. Uh, for like a large batch order like this one, if there's one or two of them in there that are not good, uh, you know, and they're they're getting the whole board um, for, the, for the, the large order, they can take the sticks. Uh, yeah, because it's not worth it for me to take the time to separate them out. Now, if I have like a small order, if somebody's ordering 20 or 
maybe 40 or even 60, I'll go on ahead and look at it and try to make sure it doesn't get in order. But in this case, it's just not worth the time and labor of messing with Well, at least we're staying consistent. So to cross cut 750 of these, it takes an hour and I've been at it for three hours. Started at like, like 10 and now it's 1 a.m. So, uh, well, anyways, at least the order is uh, packed and uh, ready to have a shipping label put on it and wrapped in some plastic wrap and taped and uh, then it'll be going off to the customer so uh this next part uh is is actually some video uh that i actually you know was talking to the customer about in in correspondence um i'll be having their name on there I might even try to see if i could take it off but th it's some important things about when you're using your in my case the chopstick master or even if you're using the other tools some things that you'll need want to know about it when you're using it um, maybe you're a customer uh, of mine and you've bought some of my sticks and you're having an issue with it or maybe you feel one of the pieces is longer than the other well uh, I'm going to kind of go over somebody else's blanks and then you can kind of see what I've got versus what somebody else has got. So the images that you see here of these uh, two chopsticks are ones that um, I would sent them as a sample and you could see the tear out on the piece and I kind of addressed the tear out and uh, then the length of the pieces um, that you'll see here. So uh, this is the length of the stick. So I cut all these sticks on the, the same length. Um, sometimes I will occasionally mess one and it'll be just a little bit, you know, smaller or bigger. You know, it's it's not a super huge deal. It's a little arbitrary, but I, I thought about it too. I said after those went on air travel, uh, the pieces could even shrink a little bit. So there is the possibility that I cut them and they shrank and had movement and that might be what we're seeing but uh yeah that's kind of arbitrary and there's ways that you can you could put a little piece of wood behind it put some super glue on back and uh, uh kind of fix the height and then sand it off or put a finial on it later and uh as a second thought uh i understand that most of the people that are probably going to be ordering these are uh people that don't have tools they don't have saws they don't have you know they don't have any other equipment besides the, the kit that they bought from the place um if these blanks if i send them to somebody and they're a hair short like that or maybe a hair longer than that where they don't fit in the jig properly that is not technically my issue um you know uh for the tool uh what, what i'm getting at is the people that that buy this tool and they're buying wood um, you know, you're going to have to, you know, if you don't know how to cut things and all that, it's just, it is something that you're going to have to learn. So like I made a nest table, um, a little while back and I made that entire piece of furniture and I, I had to cut everything to length. There wasn't any, oh, I didn't have the tools. I had to, I had to get them, but you know, I don't also want to be, uh, you know, a quote unquote hard ass about that, but, uh, I've, I've had people, uh, no, not this customer here. I mean, they kind of showed me a little bit about it, but I've had some customers in the past that, that, that were a little, little, uh, a little, uh, interesting about the way they, uh, approached me about that. But, uh, yeah, have some tools so you can cut your blanks. So, uh, one other thing is mo these blanks I said were eight millimeters. Like if you are looking at the end of those sticks and this is a good image for it, you may have like a seven millimeter end, seven and a half, you know, on the ends. Cause of the way that the saw cuts it on the, uh, on the, the shallow ends of the table saw will have a slightly narrower cut just the way the power feeder works, but it's not an issue. So, cause when you run it on the tool, um, using the hand plane, it's going to cut that little bit out and you'll never notice the difference by the time you get done with it. Now, also the important thing here is about these pieces. Sometimes you will get a piece of wood that you'll plane it in one direction and it'll tear out and you'll plane it in the other direction and it'll tear out. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll get a piece that'll even stop the hand plane sometimes just because of that way that the grain is in it. And, uh, you know, even if you buy a box of 20 and all you have is 20, you might occasionally get a piece like that. But, uh, and it, you can get straight grain stuff and still have it happen. That's perfect. So, uh, if that happens, just throw the piece away, grab another one. I'm sitting here, uh, doing a second take on this video. I just wanted to send this to you just so you could see, uh, what I'm seeing. I, I noticed that your blanks that you had had an awful lot of choppiness in, in the blanks. So like, if you're looking at this, 
um, this is how th these are supposed to look when uh, you, you have them off the plane. And I just want to show you really quickly here, you know, um, kind of what the wrong what the wrong way looks like. I know that this, this stick actually happens. I'm having to turn the grain backwards and pull the, the tool towards me. But watch what happens here when I push it. All right. So if you look here, you see all that right there? That is tear out of the grain. And I noticed that most of your sticks uh, that you, you took a picture of and showed me had that going on. Um, and that is that what, what's happening is, is you're playing it against the grain uh, and, and you don't want that. So here, just to show you, I'm going to kind of get off camera here and run this across the correct way and show you how it cleans up. You know, like if you look now, I just sat there and planed it in the duration that, that you saw there. That piece is perfect going all the way across, and that is how it is supposed to look when you're playing in it. So, like, like I'm saying, so like if it's not, if it's tearing out going one way, just take, you could, your, your tool is set up to run double sided from what, what I was reading there, and just go back the other way. Now, another thing is too, and I don't know how deep you've got your little hand plane set that you're using, um, but you are not supposed to be taking um, shavings that deep on these things and just to show you like how much it's planing and I kind of understand that you may be doing like a heavier cut uh, to save time but it, it really doesn't sometimes save you time but like if you look you could barely you could barely see the edge on there I mean you could see the sawdust better than you could see the uh See the sawdust better than you could see the edge, but you should barely be able to see that blade when it's coming out of there. So I would, I would have tried adjusting your plane iron on your, uh, on your, on that little wooden body plane. It's probably gonna, it's probably gonna be a little bit harder, but uh, I mean, if you know how to use uh, a hammer to get it uh, and just hit it back, I mean, you just hit, hit the strike button on the back of it or hit the back of it and just kind of get it as best you can. Um, and then, you know, the potential for your blade might also need to be sharpened, but that should be completely smooth all the way across. Okay, so another thing too, you know, I'm sitting here splicing these videos together. These uh, blanks that you see me holding in my hand, they came from uh, Bridge City when I bought this tool. You can see the box right there, the Chopstick Master. Um, like if you look at those pieces, you notice how these are a little bit longer? Um, and even, even all of these, they're, they're all not the same size amongst each other. Uh, they, they even have that, that slight issue trying to get them. Uh, I mean, these are a little bit, I mean, they're a little bit uniform, but I could tell on the ends a little bit where they're kind of a little bit out of square. And that's because of just the way that they run through the table saw. There is going to be some arbitrary difference in them. Um, what you saw there with the ones, the way that I run these through the table saw, because that's what I use when I'm making these blanks, is I've got this power feeder that is sitting right there. I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't look, you know, like much right this minute because it's hanging out down there. I need to mount it uh, to the saw in order to use it. But it'll, when, when you're doing it, when you set it up, so let's say I'm doing a run of 100 of them. Uh, like, th this is a bundle of 100 that I have that I just did, you know, a while back. Um, if I've run another bundle, uh, with the way that the saw is set up, it's going to be a slightly different size. But when I cut yours, they're they're not going to they're going to be good to go. But uh, and like another thing, I was just trying to also show you too of like the cut quality that you get from Bridge City when they when they send you a box of blanks. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. All right, here it is. So in this one of these is split, and I think that this in my hand. That is either teak or if it's wind gay, that is like some really light wind gay. This is the type of thing that I try not to have in my blanks. Now, when I sent you that pack uh, of the uh, the samples I sent you in wind gay, I sent you one in there that had a split in it, and I purposely sent it with, sent it with a split in it because just to show you that most of the pieces of wind gay that I cut have those splits in it, and I don't, I don't really like. Uh, 
don't really like using them for blanks because they're actually a little bit too hard. I mean, I've seen sanders when, when I say sanders. I've had uh, cutting boards that I've put together that uh, I had a customer put one together and he couldn't get it flat with his, his sander. And we had a... Uh, we had a uh, jet sander. I'm not sure if you're familiar with their sanders. It's like a, a, a drum sander that you can use. That didn't get it either. It wound up burning the belts up. So then what we had to go do is we had to go run it through an industrial wide belt sander. And that sander even had difficulty running that stuff. And it was a wide belt sander. A huge machine that can uh, that can just kind of get stuff right down. And it never bogs down. In that case, it did. But, uh, yeah, just to kind of show you what you got going on, I, you know, I wanted to, uh, I'm showing you all this because I want you to be happy uh, with the blanks that you're getting. You know, I can, I can see with what you were telling me about the hardness, kind of where you're coming from, but I think that uh, you, you might need to set the depth of cut on the blade just a little bit smaller. I, I, like I say, I want you to be happy with it. And, um, yeah, man, uh, really would like to do the business with you. So um, just let me know. Oh, and uh, one other thing, too. So, like, if you have one of those blanks and it is a little bit too short for your tool, so, like, with yours, I notice it has that little locking mechanism on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't, you know, in a way that is, like, superior to this one where it just kind of has this uh, this deal here uh, on, on this one to, to kind of get it in place. Uh, my thing is with this, if it is slightly shy of that, what'll happen is it'll rock a little bit, but you know, no big deal. So what you do to counteract that is, uh, here's what you're going to want to do. And keep in mind that after you get done doing this, you're going to want to take it off. But what you do is you can take a little bit of sawdust right there. You see how I got that with the shaving piece right there? take and go in there and stick it on there now that is not stuck together with that uh as you can see if that is not self-evident and i am looking for so i have this stuff right here this is uh p210 which is your uh, spray activator for super glue is you can take some of that and basically if you picture the super glue on the bottom of this and that little shaving you just take and you glue it together and stick it on the bottom of it. And uh, you can do that and it'll increase your thickness of your piece a little bit. Or uh, you could just take super glue and uh, stick on the back of the piece and just spray it with spray activator and, you know, it'll increase your height. That way you can get away with using the blank and it's like, okay, well, the, uh, it's like, well, fine. The uh, super glue will they'll then be on the back of the piece and, just as a little uh, suggestion, what I would do, this this is me, because I've, I've done a few of these, is uh, just get you a piece of sandpaper. And uh, just take after, after you get done with it and put a finial in it. And I don't think I'm going to go all the way with it, but my whole point is, is I would I would round this off to make a finial. What I'll do is I'll shoot another video so you can you can see. Uh, this complete so you'll see all right so i have sanded this to a finial on here i kind of put like a little bit of a diamond shape on it it's kind of hard to tell and it is not 100 percent perfect i just did this really quickly with sandpaper like my tool here actually has a little little kit where i stick the uh where i stick this blank in here I if i can get it to go in there and this one, the difference is, is this one comes down and has a tool that will actually lock this down in place. In the, the case of this one, it needs to be cut down thin enough into a chopstick so it'll actually go in there. But yeah, take that super glue and you could take sandpaper and do it. If you have like a little electric sander, and I don't know if you want to use one uh, based off what you're doing, um, it's all right. You don't, you don't necessarily have to, but like even if you... You know, just take a piece of sandpaper and lay it down, kind of like what I did. You could, you could do it that way, and that's a way to handle it. But uh, anyhow, just letting you know, kind of what I had on my mind there about what you could do about that.